Heavenly Father, thank you for this opportunity again to learn more about you. We are blessed to listen to your words and teachings. As we start our Sunday school, we pray first for those who are sick. Please heal them. We also pray for those who are lonely today. Show them your love in a very special way. Thank you, Jesus. And for our lesson for today, help us to understand and apply it in our daily life. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi guys! Welcome again to our online Sunday School Story. If you had to describe what King David was like, what words could you use? Well, we can say that he was brave, loving, kind, forgiving, musical, singer. He also loved God, he was patient, prayerful, and many more. David had many good things about his character, and he certainly loved God with his whole heart. But do you think he was perfect? No, of course not. There are no perfect people anywhere in the world. Every one of us has a sinful nature living inside us, and because of this, we all do wrong things at times. And David was no different. Just because he loved God did not mean that he never sinned. One time, David had sent his army off to fight against the people in a nearby country. But David decided to stay home. Perhaps he thought that he had been fighting battles for so many years that he deserved a rest. One evening, David got up from his bed. Maybe because he could not get to sleep, he decided to have a walk around the roof of his palace. While he was up there, he looked down to a house nearby and saw a very beautiful woman taking a bath. When he first noticed her, what do you think he should have done? Yes, he should have turned away and gone somewhere else. But David stayed and watched. As he did so, he began to think, I would like to have that woman as my girlfriend. So he sent one of his trusted servants to find out who she was. His servant came back with the news. Oh, King David, her name is Bathsheba, and she is the wife of Uriah, one of our soldiers. Oh no, she was married. Does God say it is alright to have a girlfriend who is already married? No. When people want to have a close relationship with someone who already has a husband or wife of their own, it causes all kinds of problems. David had been tempted to spend time alone with this woman. Of course, there is nothing wrong with being tempted. Because we have a sinful nature, every one of us is tempted to do things we know are wrong. Being tempted is not sinful. But when we give in to temptation, that is when it becomes sin. And David gave in to this temptation. Instead of praying, Lord, please take these thoughts out of my mind. I give them over to you right now. No, David did not pray. Instead, he said to his servant, Go get her for me. 
David knew that Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, was away from home, fighting with the army, so he would not know what was happening. While Bathsheba was on her way to the palace, David was still thinking about her. His conscience was probably feeling guilty, but he ignored these guilty feelings. When we start giving in to temptation, it becomes more and more difficult to say no as time goes by. Maybe you are thinking right now, I would never do what David did. But, maybe there will be a time when you see something on TV or on the internet that you know is wrong. Do you turn it off or do you give in to temptation and keep watching? Then, Bathsheba arrived in the king's bedroom. She would have guessed why the king David wanted her. And she knew What King David wanted was wrong. But she was in a very difficult position. How could she refuse to obey the king? He had complete power over her. So in her fear, she kept quiet. What else do you think she could have done? But Sheba could have prayed, Lord, please protect me. And give me the courage to say no to the king. Even though she was scared, she could have told the king, No, I cannot be your girlfriend. I am already married. And she can turn away and run home. But she did not do that. Guys, if you are ever in a position where an older person tries to get you to do something wrong, Especially if it has to do with the private parts of your body, you should call out to God to help you and then say no to the person. Then you need to run away to a safe place. Even if you're afraid, you must have the courage to speak up and protect yourself. Unfortunately, It seems that Bathsheba did not have the courage to say no. So she allowed David to take her to his bed and sleep with her that night. The next morning, she went back home. David thought that he had got away with doing this wrong thing and that no one would find out. But who was watching everything that happened? Yes, God was watching. And how do you think God felt about what David had done? He was certainly not pleased with David. And I think God must have been hurt and sad that someone who loved him would do this. Then everything started to go wrong for David. Bathsheba sent a word to David. King David, when you slept with me, I became pregnant. Pregnant? So David quickly sent a messenger to the army commander, saying, Send Uriah home. David hoped that Uriah would sleep with his wife, but he refused to. Because when an army man was on duty, he would never sleep with his wife. David even made Uriah drunk with alcohol, but still, he stayed away from his wife. David's plan did not work. So now, he thought of an even worse plan. He arranged to have Uriah accidentally killed. David sent Uriah back to the army and he secretly sent a message to the army commander telling him, Put Uriah in the front line of the battle 
where the fighting is fiercest. Then, leave him so he will be struck down and die. Oh no! Giving in to a temptation was causing David to do one wrong thing after another. Now he was even willing to commit murder to cover up his sin. So what happened in the battlefield? The commander of the army did just as David said. And poor Uriah was killed by the enemies of Israel. When Bathsheba had finished mourning for her husband, David brought her to live in the palace as one of his wives. Because in those days, it was common for kings to have several wives. God had been watching all of these things that David had done. And now, it was time for God to act. There was a prophet called Nathan a man who was close to God and who would speak God's messages to other people. So God told Nathan to go to David with a special message. Fortunately, King David had a great respect for Nathan and knew he was a prophet who spoke for God. So he probably welcomed Nathan when he came with a message for David. Nathan began by telling David a story. And this is the story of Nathan. There were two men who lived in the same town. One was rich and the other poor. The rich man had many cattle and sheep, while the poor man had only one lamb, which he had bought. The poor man took care of it, and it grew up in his home with his children. The poor man would feed it with some of his own food and let it drink from his cup and hold it in his lap. The lamb was like a daughter to the poor man. One day, a visitor arrived at the rich man's home. The rich man did not want to kill one of his own animals to prepare a meal for his visitor. Instead, the rich man took the poor man's lamb and cooked a meal for his guest. When David heard the story, he felt very angry toward the rich man. And David said to Nathan, The rich man who did this certainly deserves to die. He showed no pity for the poor man. So he must pay him four lumps in place of the one he took. Then Nathan said to David, David, you are the rich man in the story. God chose you to be the king over Israel, and God gave you everything you have. Why did you ignore God's word by doing these things that is evil in God's eyes? You had Uriah killed and took his wife to be your own. Nathan then told David some ways in which God was going to punish him. After that, David owned up and said, Yes, I have sinned against the Lord. David began to be really sorry for what he had done. He realized how foolish he had been to give in when he had first been tempted to do wrong. There is a whole psalm in the Bible which tells us the prayer that David prayed. If you want to check, it's in Psalm 51. Here is some of what he cried out to God. Be merciful to me, wipe away my sins, wash away all my evil, and make me clean from my sin. 
I have sinned against you, only against you. Remove my sin and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Create a pure heart in me, O God, and put a new and loyal spirit in me. Do not banish me from your presence. Do not take your Holy Spirit away from me. Give me again the joy that comes from your salvation and make me willing to obey you. That is what David cried out to God. When we give in to temptation and sin against the Lord and against other people, we too should pray like David did. David did not just say the words, he really meant it with his whole heart. David asked God to forgive him and make his heart clean. Then David asked God to give him back joy in his heart. The prophet Nathan told David, God has forgiven you, but the child who is born will not live. And seven days after Bathsheba gave birth, the little boy died. But there were other consequences. Nathan had said David would have trouble with his family, and certainly it happened. Many of his sons either turned against their father or bad things happened to them, which caused David much sorrow and heartache. We must realize that when we sin, God can forgive us, but we still have to suffer the bad consequences of our sin. Bathsheba was now one of David's wives, and later on, she bore him another son called Solomon. Because David knew how much God loved and forgave him. One day, several years later, David decided, I have a beautiful place to live in. Now, I want to build a temple for God. David knew that God does not live in a temple since he fills the whole earth. But David wanted a special building in Jerusalem that people could come to from all over Israel to worship the Lord. God was pleased that David wanted to build such a temple. But God told him, David, you are not the one to build this temple. After you will die, I will raise up one of your sons to be king. He is the one who will build a house for my name. David got all the building materials ready in his lifetime. But it was left to his son, Solomon, to build the temple. Solomon. Yes, although David had many sons, he was the one God chose to become the new king after his father David died. The temple Solomon built became one of the greatest buildings in the world in those days. This is just the front entrance. The whole of the inside was covered with pure gold. People came from many countries to see how beautiful it was. David, the one who planned this great temple, became the greatest king in Israel's history. He was also one of the greatest kings any country has ever had. If you remember, a few stories ago, we heard about Ruth, who had decided to start following God. Well, David was her great-grandson. Although Ruth was not alive when David became king, I am sure 
she would have been very proud of her great-grandson. And of course, David had many descendants after him. I'm going to ask you a question. Who was David's greatest descendant? Yes, it was the Lord Jesus himself. Jesus was born a thousand years after David was king of Israel. In fact, while Jesus was living on earth, he was often called the son of David because he was David's great, 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 great grandson that's 13 greats although david lived with the terrible consequences of his actions god's great forgiveness is shown by allowing his son jesus to be called the son of david when david died and he went to be with the lord i am sure he was greeted with words like this, Well done, David. You have loved me and served me faithfully and well. Come and enjoy the reward I have for you. If we will follow and serve God as David did, we too will be rewarded by the Lord. Of course, if we have sinned by disobeying the Lord, we must ask Him to forgive us as David did. Let us all close our eyes and those who need to ask God's forgiveness can do so right now. Or if you want to tell God that you will serve Him with your whole heart as David did, you can do that. I will give you time to pray on your own. Our Heavenly Father, please be merciful to us and wipe away our sins. Give us a clean heart, O God, and do not take your Holy Spirit away from us. Give us again the joy that comes from your salvation and make us willing to obey you. This we ask, in Jesus' name we pray, Amen.